Good. Kaylin, happy holidays. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You know what? I'm doing great. You know, I love this time of year. I don't know about you, but there's just something about the holiday season. I, I don't know. I just, I'm here for it. I love it. We are in the thick of it right now. Mm -hmm. And we are wishing everybody happy holidays as they watch this video on uh, ways that we can help decrease our stress and manage stress during these, what have been traditionally very hectic times. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to do this with you. Hey, so just a quick introduction of who we are. Uh, my name is Kaylin McBee. I'm the owner of Balance Massage and Wellness Center. We're located right in town on 135 Day Street in Newington, and we really are a one-stop shop for all of your health and wellness needs. I'm a board-certified massage therapist and a Reiki master, and between my staff and I, we offer ways to help people feel their best. The center has yoga five days a week, and we also have additional wellness practitioners, including Jen Tarillo. Hi, Jen. Awesome. Hey, yeah, I, I am super excited to be a part of the Wellness Center. We're going on just over a year, and my name is Jen, and I am a licensed athletic trainer, and I'm a registered yoga teacher, and to parallel along with Kaylin's description of the center, I truly enjoy helping people to move their body to feel their best, and you are correct with the yoga piece. It is one of the most fun things that I get to do. I get to guide people through movement and breath. And a lot of people will turn to yoga to help reduce stress. And that's kind of what we're here to talk about. And, you know, today I want to talk about two things and they all involve our eyes. If you think about our eyes, they are the, the organ within our body that takes in so much stimulus, takes in literally everything in our world around us. And when things may feel tightly wound, stressful, tense, there are two techniques that I'd love to share with you today that can help whew, quiet down the nervous system, maybe take out some of that external stimulus and bring out a sense of calm. So the first one I'm going to show you is called cupping. And we're going to take our hands and create these little cups. And we're going to use them to block out light stimulus, all the stuff that we have around us. So we'll cup over one eye and then the second. And just being sure that when we cover, we're really connecting our fingers to the face so that there's no light seeping in. And once we find that positioning, that, that just right positioning, I'd encourage you to take three to five deep, expansive breaths. The first one or two breaths can be. I just took two already before you even said it. So we're on the right. Yeah. Path. Cause you know what? The body knows what it needs. And as soon as we quiet what's coming in through the eyes, which goes right to the brain, as soon as we quiet that down, our body turns inwards and it just says breathe. So I love that Kaylin, that your body automatically kicked it into autopilot. That I'm just going to breathe. So that's the first technique is eye cupping, three to five breaths. I always encourage longer is better. And that breath should be expansive, front to back, side to side, and filling from the top all the way to the bottom of that whole midsection. The second technique that I would love to share with you is just a really simple massage. Ah, oh, look at you. <laughs> Right room and the light has just come. Woo, it's I have to say <clears throat> things are a little bit softer, maybe a little okay. bit more gentle. So that was that was really great. Love. I've never done that before. I love that. That's fantastic. So the second um the second technique is gonna just be a, a very gentle massage around the eye. So right around the eye, I know I'm going to transition right to you. So <clears throat> right around the eye, we have the orbital bone. So we can just trace our fingers and feel it. It goes right around the eyebrows and right below the eyes, right into the nasal bone here. So taking your two fingers, or you can use one, 
values to today, we're going to start right here in the crease of the eyes. Now we're not pressing hard. It's super gentle. And we're going to start right in the corner of the eyebrow and nasal bone. And we're just going to start to create little circles and slowly move your fingers across the eyebrows, following the shape of that orbital bone until we get to the outside edge of the eye. Reconnecting with your breath. And then we're going to continue on below the eye, little tiny circles. And eventually getting right to the tear ducts. And we'll end our little eye massage there. Now you can really stretch it out and keep it nice and slow. Or you can kind of, I've got 10 seconds to do this. I know I've got some work on my computer, maybe some online shopping. And I, I really want to whew, dial it down and get myself present in the moment. It's a wonderful technique. So yeah, so we got the eye cupping and the gentle eye massage. Those are my go-tos to reduce holiday stress, Kaylin. I love all of that. And as a massage therapist, while I get massages, all of these additional techniques and tricks and tips are just one more way that I can make sure that I'm doing good self-care for myself. So I give yeah. a lot of massages and I get massages too, but <clears throat> it's never enough, just like everybody else. Oh, for sure. Self-care. Wow. Right. How can that help with stress reduction? <laughs> in, the, in the heat of all of this um, holiday time, it's really important to make sure that you are putting yourself on that list of priorities. The other thing before we start to shift to the next topic is it's really interesting because several of actually many of those points are really powerful acupressure points for helping with sinus stuff. So as we're in this time of the heat has kicked on, or maybe you have a fireplace or a wood stove and things are dry and your sinuses are feeling a little crunchy, doing that same exact technique around you know, from the inside corner of the eye, over the brow to the outside, those are all those sinuses techniques. So if you're feeling a little bit congested, whether it's sort of from a stress level congested or whether from it's a physical level congested, all of that is really helpful. So really great technique, Jen. Thank you. I love that add-on, Kaylin. That's such a great point. So thank you for sharing. You might even notice little tender spots mm -hmm. and it's subtle. It's not going to be a blaring tender spot, but as you work through that congestion, that sinus pressure, you might find that in those, in those tender spots. So fantastic. I love it. And it might last thing on that. It might also cause your nose to run a little bit because you're kind of opening things up. That's totally normal. So maybe do that with a tissue next to you. So that <laughs> starting to move and groove through, then all of that can start to flow out. Perfect for the winter season. I love it. Exactly. So we are obviously in the thick of all of the holidays. Uh, Thanksgiving has passed, Hanukkah has passed, and for those who celebrate Christmas and New Year's, we're all, we're kind of in the middle of the mix there. And so we also wanted to talk about not just some physical things that we could help support your natural stress reduction during this time, but also some mental options. And so we're really going to talk now about shifting some of our mindset. And for me, this can be the most challenging thing to do. We've got a million things on our to-do list. Work is still busy. If you have families, whether your immediate nuclear family, the one that you live with, but now we're expanding to include all of the relatives that are also kind of put into the mix with spending time together at the holidays. So I'm going to give some fairly concrete examples of ways that we can start to shift our mindset in order to help manage those stress levels during the time. So the first that I love, love, love is changing how we give gifts. So I'm really excited. We, I, my family just had our third nephew um, just in the beginning of November. So there's these three little guys and, um, you know, there's a ton of really cute physical gifts to give children, especially children. Um, but my goal as the best aunt ever is to really give 
experiential gifts. So things like having time together. I can speak personally that my family doesn't live that close to me. They live in New Jersey. So the time that we have together is so valuable to me. And so making that change in um, going to a store and buying something just to buy it. And I know we've all done that before. Like I need to get a gift just because I need to get a gift. You actually don't. What you can do is think about perhaps one of your family members' favorite activities. Maybe they love to bake. They are, you know, they're the ones in the family who do all the baking. So maybe you decide that you are going to find two really cool recipes and set a Saturday afternoon to have that time together and bake as a family or bake as, you know, an aunt to a nephew or a sister to a brother, because those are the moments and those are the memories that are the ones that keep on giving over and over. So making that shift in what you're imagining a gift to be, less physical, more experiential and time together. Now, so meaningful. someone might say, gosh, my schedule is so hectic because of the holidays anyway. It doesn't have to be during the holidays. Maybe your gift is sometime in January or February when things have calmed down and life is a little bit more in the winter doldrums. That gives us something to look at, you know, look forward to, to be excited about. So shifting again from the physical to the time spent together. Um, a next really concrete example of how to make sure that we are keeping our stress levels in check for the holidays is to be present in the moment. So I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of gal. And one of the things that I really took away from all of the pandemic stuff is that it's okay for our lives to slow down and to not be in this constant kind of gerbil wheel go, 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 go. So remember that being present in the moment, stop for a pause. So the pause can be small. It could be just taking a single breath, perhaps before responding to a phone call or an email. It can be as, you know, if someone's sort of knitting at your ear, like it, 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 it. you can just take a deep breath in your nose, out your mouth and be present in that moment. Um, another way to be present in the moment is to just take a look around. Notice something in the room, whether it's how the sunshine is shining into the window, whether it's um, the sound of the clock, whether it's a smell that you're sensing because something is baking in the oven. So taking that moment to just be in the present, to to slow that time down, to take a snapshot in that moment helps us to put a uh, sort of a, a, a soft stop, we'll call it, on that treadmill of going, going, going. Right, hit the pause button. Hit that pause button. Mm -hmm. The other thing I love <clears throat> to do is wiggle my toes at the same time that I'm smiling. I have no <laughs> idea how or why I came up with this, but wiggling my toes helps to bring me back into my physical presence, into my physical body. Because I'm, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> What's going on down there? Oh yeah, my feet. I'm not, they're not crunched up. I'm not clenching my fists. I'm letting my feet relax. So wiggling my toes and smiling. Because there are, as the muscles that contract in order to smile are uh, engaged, they actually bring on a sense of joy. So the, the adage of fake it till you make it is not actually wrong. There are, <laughs> there are times when you just smile and somehow it just makes you feel a little bit better. So being present in that moment, taking a look around, what's going on, taking a breath, wiggling your toes, and then putting a smile on your face. The last piece I wanna talk about, which is um, thankfully, becoming more and more aware in people's day-to-day -day activities is creating a sense of gratitude, of finding thankfulness in what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And these can be for major things in your life, or they can be for something really small. Some days, maybe the 
proverbial poo has hit the fan and there are a lot of things that are happening that perhaps are out of control for you, that's sometimes just how life goes. So finding gratitude in the big things and the small things. So let's find some examples there. So let's find gratitude in our family. You know, even when crazy Uncle Joe comes over and he's snoring halfway through dinner because he's just, that's just what's going on. Well, maybe you can be grateful that he's there with you physically. You know, there's family that might be across the country that aren't able to be together. So we can be thankful that crazy Uncle Joe is still a part of eating the turkey and having the Christmas ham and everything else. So we're thankful for you, crazy Uncle Joe. We're glad. <laughs> things are hectic at work and you could spin it as I have a job right. and I am able to, you know, provide comfort for my family. And it's just, it's like this concept of reframing. Um, if you think of, you know, psychology, so it's so important finding things that you're grateful for. I love that. So family and work are the two, probably the two major aspects of our lives to help find, you know, that we really sort of need to see gratitude. Um, but sometimes they're in just the little things. So, you know, time is precious. And sometimes, for example, we celebrate Christmas, getting the house decorated before we start it. There's always a little voice in my head that's like, okay, so now we're <laughs> decorating the house. But then I turn a little music on, I don't know, maybe I pour myself a hot chocolate or something with a little more oomph, like a hot apple cider with a little something special in it. And then I decide, you know what? Our tree is beautiful. I love pulling every ornament out and seeing where it came from or remembering where we were when we picked it up. And I'm thankful for all of that and how beautiful and lovely the house looks during all of that process. Or maybe you're someone who's able to take a couple of days off from work during those times and your thankfulness in that day is that you don't have to set your alarm. That is like mm -hmm. a tiny thing, but I have huge gratitude on days that I don't have to set my alarm to get up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but you, you are not alone. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, but when it does, it is purely magical. Yeah. It's like a little gift, right? <laughs> so we want to be thankful for that. So, for sure. you know, those are just some examples on how to shift some of the mindset that we have during this holiday season. And then the last piece that we'll really talk about are ways that we can lighten our load. And we have to do that by asking for help. And sometimes this is the most challenging for people. We just keep packing all of these responsibilities onto our back. One more thing. I have, I've always done it this way, so I have to do it again this way. So, I'll give you an example of one way that this year I asked for help. Um, my family doesn't live, most of my family doesn't live in the area, so they all travel here. So we are always hosts for the holiday. And I decided I was going to order Thanksgiving dinner. I was not, I did not want to be in the kitchen for four hours because I wanted to value the time with my family more so. And it was awesome. <gasps> <laughs> great. I loved just being able to pop it into the oven and just have it be done. So I asked for help. I said, I don't, this is not something I want to do. I want to have someone else help me. So that was one of the ways that we got help this year. Jen, what are some ways that maybe you have asked for help in the recent season? Oh my goodness. I think thinking about things that you love to do and putting your energy into those things. And if you have the option to, you know, maybe delegate some of the activities that you don't particularly love, <laughs> um, I think that's a huge way to say, you know what? I love baking. Let me do the baking. I know we all love to do cookies and exchanges. I would love to do that. Why don't you help me out with something else um so well, I, I think very bizarrely I'm, love to wrap packages I love it really I do I like the crisp folds I love 
the tape. I love how oh. it looks when it's done. Maybe we should talk. Um, I'm <laughs> doing my baking and I'll be the rest. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I think because I wait till last minute. That's my problem. So I'm not present in the moment. And I now see it as, oh my gosh, I've got to wrap these all now. And then it's stressful. <laughs> but if we ask for help, and mm -hmm. know ahead of time that you like to do the baking so that we can have awesome pies or cookies for the holiday and we take care of the wrapping for you, that's a nice way to take something that you don't like off of your plate. So asking for help in that way. Yeah. Um, we don't have children, but a lot of my friends do. And one of the things that I thought was a brilliant way for busy parents to ask for help is to find other parents and do sort of a kid exchange. <laughs> Not like my kids for your kids and six and four, <laughs> but more like, hey, listen, um, I know our kids love to play together. What if on this Saturday afternoon, can you take all the kids to give us a break? And then next Saturday, why don't we take all the kids and then that'll give you a break? So it's another way to ask for help. The kids are happy. The parents are, you know, are still having the time to do what they need to do. And it's a great way to not just ask for help, but also give help to somebody else. Sure. And it's a great way to connect with your partner too, if you have children um, or even pets, if things are crazy in the house. I have two dogs that wrestle all of the time. And, you know, sometimes that quiet is just a really wonderful way to just uh, turn inwards and and get that relief that that maybe you're craving your body and your mind craves i love that um so those were just a couple of tips and techniques that jen and i wanted to share with you today we are so thrilled that you chose to spend your time with us and partnering with the lucy robbins wells library that's yes that's, i'm hoping i got it's that. it's always a mouthful it's always a mouthful <laughs> I live in town, so I just call it the Newington Library. Um, yep. They are a wealth of um, options and have a ton of different programs to support our community. And we're so thankful that they have shared this opportunity with us. So um, I will just say thank you all and show some gratitude for you today. We hope that you were able to find a couple of nuggets in the presentation today about really practical ways to help naturally decrease holiday stress. And my name is Kaylin McBee. Again, I'm the owner of Balance Massage and Wellness Center located right here in town in Newington on Bay Street. And I am one of the proud resident practitioners. My name is Jen and I'm the owner of Concentric Care. And I hope to see you guys in our space at some point. Come and visit us at any time. And again, happy holidays. And thank you for taking the time to uh, share it with us. Make it a great day. Make it a great day, everybody. Happy holidays.